great to have your company on Sports Day on this Tuesday night as we talk AFL. And the GWS Giants have made a leadership decision for 2022. And Stephen Cornelio, who, of course, is a West Australian, is part of that leadership group, continuing his reign as captain, although sharing it. Uh, Stephen, thanks for your time tonight. No, thanks for having me on, guys. What about the decision? And I guess people will ask the question, uh, having more than one captain is always uh, going to bring some queries. Uh, How does it sit with the Giants group? No, it sits well. I think, um, you know, ultimately it's a, you know, group decision. Um, and to be honest, I think that's how, you know, it should be every year in terms of, you know, what the group wants and, um, you know, the leadership group and captains uh, are there to serve the group. So, um, yeah, to have three and to have, you know, two guys like Josh and, and, and Toby is, is exciting for the group, exciting for, for them. I've, you know, obviously had the privilege to, to do it by myself for the last, two years and, and then previous to that we've had co-captains so um, it's not something we haven't done before but um, you know one that we're looking forward to, to working together. Were you comfortable being captain by yourself and if so are you just as equally happy to, to share the, the load? Yeah definitely I think um, you know first and foremost I still you know wanted to wanted to do it and, and be involved but if that meant co-captaincy model or um, you know standalone captain both both sat well with me. Um, we did a, we did it pretty much straight away, uh, in terms of you know um, asking what the group wanted when we got back from uh, pre season. And I know you know in years gone by we, we've done it early some years, and other years we you know waited till sort of uh, January February. But you know we feel like we've got a really strong core group of guys, and and, and we were away for a long time together. So in terms of uh, you know having some you know good and deep conversations uh, the back end of last year, being in a hub situation for so long. Uh, it felt like, you know, just getting it over early with and, 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 and working together over a whole pre-season is, uh, you know, good, better for the group. Cogs, you've had some injury concerns and some form issues across the last two years when you've been in that leadership position. What have you learned about leadership at an AFL level? <laughs> I've learned it's tough. It's very tough. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, it's, it's been, yeah, it's been, it was, I guess, the, I guess the two years, it's, it's you know it is hard to compare it on on some aspects you know because it was such a in different year or two years really with with the COVID situation something we haven't you know ever had before and and probably captains that have done it for so long wouldn't have experienced something like that but you know being away um, you know having having more to to worry about than than just footy in terms of you know how guys are going you know and being away from families and kids and. Um, and whatnot, and being in a really different environment. Um, you know, I think for me personally as well, it was, it was hard at times not being able to contribute on the field. And, and you know, when I was, you know, form wise, wasn't at my absolute um, best. So, you know, what other ways can I help out or add to that or, you know, try and get better? But, you know, as, as things stand now, I'm in a really good headspace and my, my body's feeling as good as it has for a long time. So, um, yeah, looking to. Use a lot of those, I guess, lessons over the last couple of years to to, to move forward with, you know, like we said before, uh, the other boys as co-captains and, um, you know, Nick Haynes to our leadership group as well. I'm excited for what you're going to do this year because great players, they have even bigger comebacks and you do get that eye of the tiger where you say, right, I've got to get back to where I was. Have you felt that and do you think this year coming up for you is going to get you back to your best? Yeah, look, I think think, think definitely. I think that, you know, after after a period like that um, in anyone's uh, career, I think you know you definitely ask yourself some questions uh, as to where you're at, um, and and off season and especially this one just gone by, I've used, you know had a lot of reflection time and a lot, a lot of time to really just get things better and, and, and feeling better in terms of you know my my body and, and getting myself to a level where I you know can do the things that I want to do because you know at times last year was it was frustrating not being able to to do that so. Um, yeah, look, I'm 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 blessed and, and surrounded with it with a great group of guys here, and um, uh, just looking forward to you know having a having a good guy this preseason and 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 when the season comes around, um, getting back to to the player that I was. So you've got Josh Kelly and Toby Green as your co-captains going back to 2012. Of course, you had Luke Power, Callan Ward, and Phil Davis leading the way. The name that I suppose mo- most people will ask is Toby Green, and what sort of leader? he will become in an official capacity given he's going to miss the first chunk of 2022. Tell us a bit about him. We know he's a talent. We know he's had some, I guess, disciplinary issues. But what sort of leader 
can he and will he be? Yeah, look, I think uh, I think I think that he's definitely always been more actions than than, than words, but he's really added that um, you know ability to to speak in front of the group. To um, he's always had that really natural um, you know one on one or or with a couple of uh, the younger boys and really helping them through. I think you know his actions though are the, are the main ones. That there's no one that you know trains harder than him, and you know even in December now in pre-season or January, um, any young player coming in, uh, we'll look at his work ethic at training and, and just see the the amount of work he puts into his game as to why he's why he's so good. But um, you know his ability, I think, over the last couple of years to to stand out in front of the group with his, with his voice and, um, and and work with guys on a more personal level is. Is what's really elevated him. I think um, he would be the first one to admit that leadership wasn't um, the leadership group or, or, or being the captain probably wasn't on his radar maybe three or four years ago. But um, he understands that he's only got one shot at this career, and, and he wants to win more than anyone. And, and, and for and for us to get closer to, to where we want to be, he needs to he needs to be um, a leader, and, and he has done a wonderful job in the last couple of years. Can you trust him not to let you down again in the big moments? Yeah, look, I think every every um, you know time in the past, I think he's, he's obviously had a lot of in, a lot of things that he would have loved back over his time. I think you know, obviously the one at the moment that everyone's fresh in everyone's memory was the one in the final last year. But um, you know, the, I, I feel anyway with my, my relationship with Tobes, the more trust I can give him, um, you know, the better he feels about it. He knows he let the club down. He knows he let himself down and, and, and the teammates, and um, you know, him more than anyone. Uh, is, is is working to you know to win some respect back from I guess the the wider community, but in terms of the club, we hold him in such high regard and and, and love what he does for our footy club. Now, Stephen, during the postseason, uh, there are lots of rumours, lots of speculation. Your name, as you well would know, was thrown up as a a possible return home to WA, possibly with the Dockers. Um, any sense of truth to that? Was it ever on the radar? Were you always going to be a giant, and uh, it was just part of the scuttlebutt that happens? After the end of the season, yeah, no, no, no truth to that at all. Um, I was obviously in Perth as well, which didn't help. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I guess everywhere I went at that time, you know, people were asking, and yeah, there was a couple, couple of rumours floating around in, in the media. But uh, yeah, but no, no truth to that at all. I, um, you know, when I when I only signed, you know, a seven year contract a couple of years ago, and um, you know, want want to be a giant for life, and um, I love it here in Sydney, and and, and like we said earlier, I've had a Tough couple of years, no doubt, but as, as Hayes was saying before, um, you know, at times I, I love my back, my back against the wall and um, have that eye of the tiger to, to, to want to come back and, and to want to, you know, really push forward um, with this team and, and try and win something. We're speaking with uh, Giants co-captain Stephen Cornelio here on Sports Day. What about Bobby Hill? He did want to leave the Giants. How is he going to be welcomed back into your football club? No, I, I, honestly, I saw him... Um, we're doing some boxing uh, back in back in Perth, and um, I think by, by the time the trade period had finished, it was about seven thirty in, uh, in in Sydney and Melbourne, and four thirty in Perth, and 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 we we're boxing at five thirty, and I, I, yeah, of course it was a little bit sheepish, I think, but um, you know straight away I had to sit her on the head and said, mate, like of course you wanted to leave, and um, you know you didn't go through, you might not be happy with it, but in terms of me, in terms of the rest of the players, I've already spoken to a couple. We'll wait. We'll treat you as, as as we always have, and and we love him as a as a as a player first and foremost. But a, a, you know he's a great guy, and um, I, you know what I think he obviously had the time wanted to to leave it. I know he loves the club deep down, and um, it's 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 how I felt at the moment. I think you, you look overseas and with other sports, it's it happens probably a bit more regularly, and it has the last couple of years in the AFL. And I think it'll get to a stage where uh, we'll see more and more of this as years come coming by. You win some, you lose some, and you won Jared Brando. I think he's going to do well at your football club. How has he settled in, and where do you think he'll play this season? Yeah, he settled really well. Um, you know, great guy, and uh, training the house down at the moment. Um, we were, yeah, we were obviously rough with that one, and, and um, you know, coming through um, our academy and, and knowing a, a few of the boys, they were, you know, quite surprised that West Coast had actually let him go. So um, he's fit in, he's fit in really well, and. Um, at the moment, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, you know, I think obviously maybe with, with, with Finn Lason moving on as well, there, there could be a spot down forward for him. And um, you know, I, I like his size, and, and he's got a really good penetrating kick on him. So uh, potentially forward at this stage, I reckon. 
right next to our boy Jesse Hogan. How's his preseason been? Yeah, he's he's good. He obviously was in was in Perth for for a little bit as well. So um, he's come back, and yeah, I think he, I'm pretty sure he almost ran a two k um, PB for his two k and, and 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 looking looking really fit as well. So um, you know, the more time we can have him on the park, we know he's just a serial goal scorer, and um, and that's and that's great for us. Uh, one quick one about 2022, uh, Stephen. The prospect of playing finals, obviously, that's uh, a non-negotiable for this giant squad. But the premiership window, you came close playing on grand final day, of course. But is it still open very much for this group? Yeah, I think I think for sure. I think we showed signs last year of um, you know what we can do um, in a in a season where you know we we didn't really play any home games at all uh, in front of our. In front of our home supporters, there wasn't many um, over the last two years. So um, we've got a, we've got a really you know good young group of players, but everyone's really hungry and, um, and aspiring to to get there. But you know it's just so hard to make predictions in this game. I mean, you know Melbourne are obviously around the mark for the last couple of years, but you know what Richmond were able to do when they first burst onto the scene, not many would have predicted. And um, as long as we can keep you know working hard and um, you know thinking we're doing the right things, we'll, we'll get closer to where we want to be. How do you feel about the WA borders opening up on the fifth of February? Yeah, I think uh, you know personally, it's been coming for a while. Um, would have loved it. Would have, would have loved it to to have been open for 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 a little while. But um, yeah, I saw it was uh, yeah fifth of February. I think um, you know everyone that's either trying to get in or, or out of uh, Perth. I think it's a I think it's a great sign and. Um, you know, ultimately to to move forward and, and work together, and uh, you know, if the numbers are what they are, then then I think it's a safe thing to do. So, Stephen, uh, really appreciate your time. Congratulations on continuing your role as a captain at the Giants. Uh, a huge season ahead for GWS. Uh, we saw them play in a final here in Perth last year, and or well, this year in fact. And uh, let's hope there's more success coming away. We mentioned February the fifth. Well, I can say to you that uh, March nineteen is the most important date that you should worry about because that's, of course, up against the Sydney Swans round one, March nineteen. Uh, can't wait to see uh, your boys in action. Thanks for being part of Sports Day. Thanks, guys, and uh, yeah, wishing you and all the listeners a merry Christmas.